You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. Hi, I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, and this is Extras from Extension on Eagle Community TV. Do you find that busy schedules are interrupting your ability to get a meal on the table? And do you turn to either a restaurant meal or a drive through meal or a concession stand meal on those busy nights just to try to feed your family? Well, if busy schedules are making you sacrifice home-cooked meals, then maybe I've got a suggestion for you that will be uh, helpful. Um, the cook once and eat later freezer meal um, method may be something that could be useful for your family. This is a concentrated form of cooking where you spend time and energy once to prepare several meals that your family will be able to enjoy in the days or weeks or maybe even months to come. So why on earth would we want to cook this way? Well, there are um, several reasons that I think this might be an advantage for some families who'd like to give it a try. First of all, it saves time on those busy nights. Now, all you're doing is transferring your time from that cooking marathon that you might have done on a weekend, but when it's a nighttime and you've got to get the family fed and get out the door to another activity, uh, it will save time on those evenings to have a meal that's already prepared. You'll find that this style of uh, food preparation may also save money for your family as well. For example, if you can avoid eating out and be able to eat a meal at home, you'll uh, likely save money. But also, you might be able to take advantage of specials when um, chickens or pork roasts or beef roasts go on sale. You may be able to use that to put um, meals together uh, in a more cost-effective way. And take advantage of those sale prices. Uh, if you buy in bulk, sometimes uh, that will be a little less expensive, and you might decrease those food losses uh, from those shopping trips when you had really great intentions, and by the end of the week, you had never got that food prepared. And I know I've lost a few items that uh, just didn't make it onto the, um, onto the family meal table. Another great reason uh, to think about this style of cooking is that it may help you eat healthier. If your freezer is full of main dishes, then your refrigerator can be full of the fruits and vegetables that can be the sides to accompany those meals. And fruits and vegetables are often what's lacking if you resort to going out to eat on a busy night instead. So you'll be able to get more nutrients into your family by having um, a main dish already, already prepared and having a bowl of fruit or a bag of baby carrots to go with it uh, and enhance that meal. Also, um, cooking ahead, eating at home helps you preserve those family meal times. And we know there's more advantages than just the food you get into your family by sharing that time around the table. Um, what we know is that it strengthens the family bond, but it also has some really positive effects on the children themselves. First of all, kids who spend more time at the dinner table with their families have better language and literacy skills, uh, better vocabularies, even better test scores. And youth that spend time with their families uh, eating a family meal are less likely to turn to negative behaviors like smoking, um, drinking, and drugs. Uh, so it can be a real protective factor for children as well. And finally, having meals on hand in your freezer it lets you be more his hospitable. You can, and you can handle those last minute guests or you can invite someone over for a meal that may need your company or may need a, a good hot meal that day. You'll also be better prepared to share a meal with those who need it. For example, after a death or uh, when there's a new baby in a household, uh, when someone's just come home from the hospital or an elderly friend or family member that needs a meal. And so you can uh, really expand your ability to share and, and uh, support people uh, by having a few meals on hand. Well, there are three different strategies that you can uh, use to approach having meals on hand in your freezer. And the first of those is to combine meal components that then will need some extra cooking time. So for example, I've got, um, uh, this happens to be a pork roast that will be um, intended to go into the slow cooker for um, 
shredded pork uh, for a Mexican meal sometime. This happens to be an oven casserole that would go into the oven um, on a busy night. So having those foods prepared that still need a little bit of extra cooking give you some flexibility to put things in a slow cooker or uh, be able to pop it in the oven as soon as you get home. Another option is to do fully prepared meals that only need to be reheated. And I've got a, a package of breakfast burritos here that um, uh, is an example of that, but it might be enchiladas or it might be casseroles, um, maybe soup that you um, uh, like to have on hand or that you want to make up in a big pot and portion out, beer rocks, all of those sorts of things that you can have ready to just reheat quickly for a busy night. Or the third strategy is to think about preparing key ingredients for a meal that you can uh, then combine into many different kinds of dishes. For example, I've browned up some hamburger with onion and this could be the beginnings of chili or tacos. It could go on a pizza, uh, could be used in lots of different ways. So um, having uh, ground beef or a roast or chicken that you've already pre-cooked and shredded gives you flexibility to combine with other ingredients and pull a meal together. When we're thinking about freezer meals, we also need to think a little bit about the containers we're going to use because we want these foods to uh, really retain their top quality in the freezer. So make sure that you're choosing things that are airtight, leak-proof, and freezable uh, that won't get brittle or break or um, tear through in the, um, in the freezer. So I've got um, aluminum pans, freezer bags, um, plastic food containers that are de designed for food storage. What we probably want to do is to avoid recycled household food containers because some of them weren't intended to spend much time in the freezer to begin with and often they don't have an airtight seal uh, for keeping your food at its freshest and best in the freezer. If we can keep air away from food uh, while it's in the freezer, it preserves flavor and uh, quality and helps prevent freezer burn. So that's an important thing to think about. And finally, it's important to keep food safety in mind if you're working with large quantities of food. So you'll want to use a food thermometer to monitor the temperature of food as you're cooking it and as you're cooling it to make sure that it is uh, reaching appropriate temperatures in the right time in both of those steps. And if you're going to put a, a, a large amount of food, which maybe constitutes a good portion of your monthly food budget, into the freezer, you want to make sure that freezer is working properly. So um, having an appliance thermometer in the freezer helps you uh, monitor the temperature. And certainly as we're approaching spring storm season where we may have power issues, um, it's worth being able to know what the temperature of your stored food is should you lose power. Another food safety step is to clearly label the food when it goes into your freezer so that you know what the cooking or reheating instructions are and you've got a use by date penciled in so that you know uh, that within three months you'll be able to get that food used up and um, served to your family while it's still at top quality. And finally, a food safety reminder is to think about thawing these foods properly. I mentioned uh, earlier that when we're using a slow cooker, we really do um, want to think about having that food completely thawed uh, to go into the cooker, not frozen. And where's the best place to thaw food? Well, certainly that's in the refrigerator to preserve those cold temperatures. So um, thawing is another important factor in food safety to getting all this food put together. Well, if you'd like to learn more, the Ellis County Extension Office is going to be sponsoring a freezer meal workshop called Freezer Meals from the Meat Case. Um, we have a limited enrollment for this, so if you're interested, you need to let us know right away. Uh, we'll be preparing four different freezer meals that families can take home and uh, store in the freezer for their families to enjoy. The cost is $40, which includes your evening instruction, all the ingredients for the meals, plus your supper that night uh, to be able to uh, enjoy this workshop. Uh, again, that's on Tuesday, April 25th, 5.30 to 7.30, and we're using the Messiah Lutheran Church and their big kitchen to be able to hold this workshop. There's more information about this available at the Ellis County Extension Office. 
Also on our website, you'll find some other resources which may be helpful as you try to uh, get into the, the habit of preparing some meals ahead. If you'd like a recipe sheet for freezer ready slow cooker meals, um, these are already put together. They've got um, a shopping list that accompanies this so that if you wanna make all the meals, the shopping list is already there for you. Or maybe you'd like the extension publication that gives you some more guidance on uh, factors to think about when you're preparing meals for the freezer for your family. Well, it's possible to get a, fa a meal on the table for your family on a busy night. This is one strategy that might help. And if you'd like to know more about this whole cook ahead, freezer meal style of food preparation, give us a call at the Ellis County Extension Office and I'll be happy to brainstorm with you. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. And this has been Extras from Extension on Eagle Community TV. You're watching Extras from the Extension on Eagle Community Television. 